What's up, homies? Welcome back to another video. Today is going to be the next episode of, get this, new title, Macros and Munchies. My girlfriend, I believe, actually came up with a name for it, so credits to her for that because, you know, cooking for gains works, it's all right, but sometimes I want stuff that's not specifically like health conscious or whatever, and it's not all the time always going to be focused on the health aspect of it, but I do like to calculate about how much, you know, macros are in it, like how much protein, calories, all that stuff. So this is going to be the next episode and we're gonna from here on out call it macros and munchies. Um, it's gonna be the next episode. Today we're gonna to be cooking, it's my first time doing it, but burger sliders. So I'm really excited. This is gonna be my current meal prep. So I think I'm gonna be making six servings right now just because I like one free day a week where I kind of freestyle my meals, just use the groceries at my house or go out to eat somewhere. So um, we are going to be doing burger sliders today and you can, these are super customizable. And one thing that I'm gonna emphasize for most of these videos is that if you want to tweak these recipes, they're super easy to tweak for either more calories, less calories, more protein, less protein. And all you have to do is change the protein to make it the protein to like a leaner protein. So like if I'm using 80-20 beef, you could use 70-30 if you really want extra calories and you don't really care for as much protein or you want it to be cheaper. Or if you want to spend more money, there's some flies, um, and you want some more protein in your meals, you can use a leaner cut of meat or you can switch out the bread for a keto bread, which is gonna be less calories um, and more protein, etc. So you can just customize it by adding your own condiments and all that kinds of stuff. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So for ingredients, some king-sized Hawaiian rolls. I love Hawaiian rolls, so that's why I'm gonna use these. They just work good for little sandwiches and sliders. So we're gonna use these king-sized Hawaiian rolls. Let's just hope that these are big enough to fit our patties. But some of these, you're gonna need a white onion. Um, you're probably not gonna need a huge one because we're just gonna be sprinkling this on whenever we smash our patties. And then of course, you're gonna need some ground beef. So the leaner ground beef you use, the more protein it's gonna be and the less fat it is. So it's gonna probably be a little bit less juicy and it's gonna be more filling. The patties are gonna turn out bigger at the end of the day. But um, I technically, for the most part, when it comes to smash burgers, you wanna be using 80-20, that's gonna be like the best ratio. I'm using 85-15% uh, leanness when it comes to this beef. I just bought it in bulk at Costco, but I'm using it because it's got a little bit more protein than the 80-20 and it's still a good amount of fat that way you can smash the patties because when it comes to smashing patties on the griddle or on the skillet it's going to be better when it's got a bit of fat in it because it's basically searing the meat in its own fat very rapidly and obviously the less fat that you have in the meat the less you know fat there is to actually sear and get a nice crust on the um on the burger so anyways 85 15 ground meat and let's actually weigh this out. I think you want to aim for around four and a half pounds But let's see how much I have really quick Side note if you can get ground beef that's like this and almost like little tiny thin lines or thin strips This is going to be better than the two packaged one when it comes to smash burgers It's just gonna allow you to make the smash burgers a little bit better when they're like this because if you look at smash burgers You can tell that there's a lot of unevenness and there's a lot of like little tiny pockets where there's little tiny holes in the patty and that's what's gonna be as a result of using this kind of ground beef rather than a super consolidated, really compressed ground beef where there's no air pockets in between all the pieces. But now that we got our meat, let's go ahead and get started with the rolling. Now that we have four and a half pounds of ground beef, since I'm making 24 patties in total, since it's six servings of four patties or four sliders, that means that I'm gonna make each of them about three ounces. So if you wanna be a bit of a, quote, perfectionist, you can weigh all these out and ball them up in a little balls in three ounces. But since I'm even more of a perfectionist, I have the thought that if I do make them three ounces, that they're gonna to be too wide and stick out all kinds of ways on the side of these sliders. And I kind of like the patties actually fitting on the bun. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to make, I know it sounds crazy, but 48 one and a half ounce ones. So I'm just gonna be getting the three ounce, weigh them out in the three ounce portions and then just split those both in half and then form those into balls. So let's get started. What I'm gonna do is portion mine into one and a half ounce balls, just like this, like I said, you don't wanna compact it too tight. 
but there we go. I'm gonna do 48 of these, or if you're doing three ounce ones, just go ahead and ball them up into 24 three ounce balls. Now that we have our crudely shaped um, balls of meat, we're gonna throw these in the fridge for a few minutes and cut up our onion. Arguably easiest part is chop off the onion. So I'm gonna cut off the top, cut off the butt. Uh, people always say if you don't want it, your eyes to cry, don't cut the top and the butt off. I find that literally nothing helps. You just gotta will your way through it. It's gonna burn your eyes no matter what, but just deshell this thing really quick. Get the outside layer off. The way we don't get any of this. And now just go ahead and dice it into really small pieces. You don't want it quite minced. You can mince it. Mincing is actually fine. It's better than it being too big, but you don't want it really big. You don't want to be really chewing on pieces of onion. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and cut it horizontally first. This is just what I'm choosing to do. You can do it whatever way you find best. I'm gonna cut these onions up a little bit more. And then just continue the chopping process. So cut them into really small bits. And we might only need, honestly, half an onion. I'm gonna cut up a little extra just in case, because it's always better to have too much than not enough. But like I said, just cut them up into really small pieces. And I think that should be about good. Nothing too crazy, not like crazy, crazy small, but just small enough, almost to where it's a little bit see-through, but nice and small. It doesn't have to be perfect, just small enough. So let's put these into a good sized bowl. That way we can get easy access and be able to pinch and grab them as we cook our patties. So get your pan. Uh, you wanna use a very nice flat pan. A cast iron is probably gonna be best for this, uh, especially if it's seasoned properly. But all you're gonna need is your onions, some salt and some pepper, as well as your patties. So um, also one thing you're gonna need if you have two spatulas, this is going to be best because what's going to happen is in order to properly get a smash burger, you really want it to be smashed and flat. So what you're going to do is when you get the patties, you're going to want to press down really hard on them or something you can actually press down on them flat with. And two patties is going to be best to do it because you push down with one and press down on it with the other to get the best amount of pressure on your patties. So go ahead and turn it on. You don't want it on too high, um, although you are trying to cook them nice and hot and fast. You don't want to burn them. You're basically going to be cooking them with the fact that it's hot and you're putting a lot of pressure on it, not just the fact that it's hot. So I'm going to go ahead and put mine on medium and especially with the cast iron, they tend to hold heat very well. So go ahead and throw it on around medium. You don't want to put it up too high and wait for it to start up before we throw on our patties. So one thing I want to add, if you want to make these smash burgers even better, this is obviously completely optional if you want to go above and beyond to make these the best you possibly can. The best way to go about this is get a meat grinder or a meat grinder attachment to a device like a KitchenAid, which is something that I have. Um, the device isn't too much extra to add to it, but if you have some kind of electric meat grinder or meat grinder in general, you want to grind up 50% chuck and 50% brisket. You want to have a good amount of leanness but you do wanna make sure that there's a good amount of fat in it, that way it's about an 80-20 ratio. But if you grind it up together, both those kinds of meat, and mix them up half and half, the flavor on this will come out amazing. This is still gonna come out really good, don't get me wrong, but if you really wanna make this just another step better, go ahead and grind up your own um, meat, so it's gonna be 50% brisket and 50% chuck. So this is gonna be our method of execution here. You're gonna sprinkle a little bit of these, onto each spot that you put a patty. I'm gonna try, and emphasis on try, to cook four of them at a time. So I'm gonna sprinkle these in all the spots I put the patty, press them down, and then season each side with literally just salt, pepper, that's it. So let's go ahead and try. So get a little bit on each spot. Already smelling really, really good, y'all. Okay. So, like I said, just go ahead and put these on there. Put it right on top. Already smells amazing, okay? And like I said, what we're gonna do here is use this to really press down on them. So, go ahead and give that a try. Now, 
as you can see, they're bigger than I expected them to be. So that's, I'm glad that I made them one and a half ounces instead of three because that really would have made them huge in comparison to the in comparison to the bun. But just go ahead and make sure you're pressing down on them. And these aren't gonna cook super fast as they would if I added a higher temperature, but that's all right. The main thing that we're worried about is making sure they're flat enough to where they stay nice and thin and that they get a nice amount of the onions cooked in there. Now I'm gonna do this, top this off with some fresh black pepper and some salt. And you don't need to flip these super, super fast. The reason why is although we are trying to cook them really quickly, we don't want them to burn and we also want there to still be a little bit of juice in them. So we're making sure they're flat, but we're gonna let them sit on here for like a good minute or two before we flip them and then just flip them every one or two minutes. It's been about two minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and flip. And this is why it's really important, like I said, to have a good flat. There we go, exactly what we wanted, nice and crusted. Because we don't want these to fall apart, and that tends to happen if you have these little smash burgers. And if you want, you could even put onions on both sides. I don't really think it needs it, honestly, because these patties are really small. And one thing is, is when you put the, the uh, onions on one side, it kind of leaks into the juices, and then when you flip it over, the juices that are from the other side of the patty tend to still have some of that onion flavor in there, so. These are looking really good already. And like I said, salt and pepper each side. And since they're so thin, you might not even have to cook them more then one each side. Just go ahead and take a look at them and see what you think it needs. They're not going to be super juicy because they're not really thick burgers, so you don't want to overcook them. You just want them nice and crispy on each side. And I think this is almost good. I'm going to give them like another 30 seconds and I think they're done. And honestly, I'm going to go ahead and reform my thinking a little bit here and try something new. The next time around, I'm actually going to turn the temperature up a little bit and try to cook them a bit faster instead of cooking them a little bit slower. That way we can get a little bit more of that searing action and have the patties be just a little bit juicy, hopefully, because if you cook them quicker, they tend to not lose as much juice. So let's get a little bit more of this. Put our four patties down. Okay, go ahead and press these down. And maybe this time around, what I'm gonna go ahead and try and do is instead, I'm gonna flip them after one minute. That way it can try to retain some of the juices. And if you really need and have a lean kind of beef, feel free to add some oil to the pan as well. And like I said, y'all, this is my first time doing this at home. I think I kinda know what I'm doing here a little bit, but hey, practice makes perfect. And honestly, I think putting the temperature a little bit higher is the way to go, so I'm gonna do that from now on out. Throughout this process, try your best to just clean up the griddle or clean up the skillet a little bit. That'll help prevent a lot of buildup of the stuff that's on there. It's inevitable that meats and um, fat buildup are gonna get on the bottom of the pan, but preventing as much as possible is definitely gonna help them have the best outcome. All you do from here on out, it's the same thing. And so we could have some toasted buns. Basically what we're gonna do is just put these flats down on top of our griddle. That way, you can get some nice toasty buns. So just leave them there for like a minute or two. You don't really need to mess with them. You can put butter on them before if you want, but I don't really think it needs it. Just let them toast for a minute or two. And you don't really need to have the temperature very high. I even turned it off and I'm just gonna let them sit on there for a good like minute or two. All right. This is about toast enough for me. It looks absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and make these sliders. All right, y'all. So these patties look amazing. I don't know if you can tell, but where they shine is not on their own. It is, in fact, the mixture of everything perfectly. So I'm gonna show y'all my way I like to assemble these. So I literally just use ketchup and mayo, right? But 
can't forget some shredded lettuce. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. But let's go ahead and set these patties up really quick. Like I said, I'm doing doubles actually. So, whoops, am I doing this the wrong way? Um, derp. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put one, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put some, a little bit of shredded lettuce on each one of these. I'm gonna go ahead and add, I'm, I'm just gonna do one pickle, because I like a good balance of flavor. I don't like too much, unless it's a really tiny pickle, maybe add two right there, one right there. Let's go add another patty. So we got doubles. Look at that, ladies and gents. Ooh, this is looking good. Okay, and you can add cheese if you want to it, or to make this even light, less calories, you could use sugar-free ketchup. You can use light mayo. The light mayo especially is not gonna make any difference. It tastes amazing, light mayo, it's just regular. I just got regular on me right now. So, I'm gonna put a little bit of mayonnaise on each one, and a little bit of ketchup on each one. So I'll put my mayo first. These might be better with cheese, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm lactose and I shouldn't be eating cheese, so I try to limit how much I use. Let's get one good squirt ketchup on each one. And voila, we have our amazing burger sliders. And honestly, I usually eat these meal preps with a side of um, potatoes that I like put in the oven or something, but right now for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna show you how to make the sliders. If y'all want, I can show you how to make my potatoes, but these look freaking amazing. I'm super ready to eat these. And now for the most important part, the taste test. Let's get a bite. Mm. Mm. The wine rolls really add a good sweetness to them. Mm. Mm hmm. Perfect. Perfect amount of onions. You could even add more if you want, but my God, those onions really, really top it off. Would I maybe prefer a different kind of bun? Possibly. I love wine rolls and I just had them, which is why I use them. So if you use little slider buns, they may work better because it is, they are really sweet. And they do, I don't wanna say they take away, they add to it, but it almost takes away from the burger a little bit. But regardless, they taste amazing. Mm. Honestly, maybe a little more ketchup. Or something, but they just need more ketchup, honestly. <laughs> mm. 10 out of 10. Well, yeah, 10 out of 10. These came out freaking amazing. I'm surprised I like, I don't really like ketchup that much, but something about these, when you put ketchup on them, they taste phenomenal. So I'm gonna say definitely, I would recommend you trying these. Maybe if you don't like the sweetness of the Hawaiian rolls, Excuse me, I would, ex I would uh, suggest maybe use something like a regular slider bun that's not as sweet, but I love how soft these are. These came out freaking amazing, and I think y'all will really enjoy them. Come on, take a look at that. Who would not, who would not like that? Hmm? I know the lighting isn't the best in here, and the camera on my phone ain't the best, but dude, this thing is gonna fill you up. It tastes amazing. Not only is it a great snack, but you know exactly what's in it, so you know how much calories you're eating. I can go ahead and put the macros up on screen, but these came out phenomenal and I would highly recommend. Hmm. So thank y'all very much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to check the rest of my channel out for some more videos. I should be making more cooking videos. Let me know any recommendations y'all got on things I should cook. Just any idea, video ideas in general. Like I said, thank y'all very much for watching. Hopefully you get to cook this and enjoy it as much as I did. I'll see y'all always later. Peace out gamers.